countryside, and it's the evening that you start to go, and perhaps you have your lover or the person who should be a lover, but it is in the walking, it's very beautiful. <laughs> and it starts about there, and they're all twinkling, it's very lovely. And then suddenly, there's a light that comes across the sky, explodes for a second, and it's gone, and you're looking, and you try to touch your lover to see if they've seen it, but it's gone already. It's a shooting star. And that is the difference between the gods and the humans. The gods and the stars that twinkle and twinkle and twinkle, and us humans, we have a little burst of light. It's there in gold. And because we're so brief, our little burst of light is more glorious, more built than any of the gods can do. And because of this, some of the gods get very, very jealous. Okay, so this is our whole story. Once upon a time, there was a king and a queen, and they had three daughters. And they got one daughter married off to some old king in another country to make the lands. They got another daughter married off to another old king, and there was only one daughter left in the palace. And of course, they spoiled her lord. And her name was Psyche. And Psyche grew up and grew up and grew up, and eventually she got to the point she was no longer a child. She wasn't quite a woman yet, but with every day she grew and grew to her she became more and more beautiful. As she was more and more beautiful, all the people in the kingdom used to say, oh, she looks like Venus. She's as beautiful as the goddess Venus herself. And they began giving gifts to her. And they began forgetting to leave gifts in the temples to Venus. Well, up in heaven, Venus herself got to hear this. And she was a bit peeved. So she made her way down to the kingdom, and she looked, and she saw the most terrible thing. There was a sweet teenage girl strutting through the streets, and everybody met her and bow in front of her and hail her and say, Oh, blessings, blessings, and hail her, and they'd give her gifts. And this wee lassie, she was loving it. There was folk coming up, they were giving her bushels of wheat. She was going, Bushels of wheat? Oh, thank you very much. And dress next time, you'd be really sweet. And somebody else would give her a fatty calf. Fatty calf? Oh, what we Shoes next time, thank you very much. <laughs> Oh, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Well, Venus was enraged. Because you have to understand, this girl was beautiful, but Venus was beyond beauty. It was like comparing an old, smoldering ember to a huge volcano. The amount of power and beauty in Venus. And she was enraged at this young one getting all these gifts. And so she went back to heaven. And when she went back, she took her blessing off the kingdom. Bless her completely off and went back to him. And when she was in heaven, she was still angry, angry, angry. So she went to the door of her son. And he was lying in bed, and his name was Cupid. Get out of bed, Cupid! Oh, mom, 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 no! Get out of now! I've got something to ask you! And she went in, she dragged pure Cupid out of bed. And he looked at his mom, what is it? What is it? He said, Cupid, you've been out last night twining the bloody animals, will never be twining the animals for me. As I girl down there, and everybody's treating her as if she's as beautiful as me, and treat her like a goddess. Well, I want you to go down to earth, and I want you to find the ugliest, smelliest, most vicious, violent, old fella you can, and make her fall in love with him. <laughs> okay, mommy! And he took me, he's been born now, and he beat his wings, and off with the <laughs> Back in the kingdom, everything was going wrong. All the crops were failing, there was no fish in the sea, the weather was going crazy, even the gardens were starting to wilt. And the king and the queen oh, didn't know what to do. So they called for the wise men. And the wise men came to the king and the queen and they said, Wise men, you must find out why our kingdom has been so blighted. And you must find a cure for this blight as well. And the wise men said, No problem, your majesties, we'll find out. And off they went, the wise men, and being very, very clever, the first thing they done was got a couple of chickens. Broke the legs, got put the legs out, opened them up, took the gizzards out. Oh! They all looked at them. Oh! It was a terrible, terrible thing they saw. And they went, oh, no, 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 must be something wrong with the chickens. More chickens! <laughs> and they went, more chickens. <laughs> went to the was same thing. Oh! Said the wise men, what do we do? What do we do? We set up a control group. So they called the small <laughs> wise men, they set up a control group, and they all went out, they got all manners of animals, and they were cut them off. They cut off chickens, and they cut off bulls and pigs, a passing minky meal, you name it, and they chopped them off. And the message was always the same. So eventually they realised they had to go back to the king and queen. 
And the wives of the bridesmaids went to the king and queen, and the king and queen said, Son, how do we find out what is black in our country and how to cure it? I have. Well, what is it? Um, well, your majesties, um, do you really want to know the truth? Of course. Do you know the truth? It's a funny, 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 your majesties. There was a fellow there, and his name was Oedipus, and he wanted the truth, and oh my God, the father, the father, the father, trust me, you're better with him blind than home. Tell us the truth, I will cut off your head. Of course, your majesties. The problem is, the Bible priest has been removed from the kingdom because you're not know, worshipping your daughter Psyche as if she was a goddess herself, and the only way to cure it is to kill your daughter. What? We have to kill her. You have to take her up to the highest mountain and leave her in the cold sledge and let her freeze to death. So, your majesties. Well, the king and queen were very, very upset, as you'd imagine, and told you to kill your daughter. But of course, they were all kings and queens of their subjects to think about, and they realised they had to do this. But well, they couldn't tell the daughter. They thought, we'll give her one last happy day before we kill her. So they told the daughter they were going to marry her off to a wonderful person. And the day came to kill her. And the daughter woke up, and it was made inside and outside her room, and it was a great parade and a carnival, and everybody from the city and everybody from the kingdom we walked and walked all the way up the mountain, and it was great golden banners and folk dancing and singing. And of course, we said he was so happy with a new coat and a new hat and all the wedding gifts. <laughs> And they got higher and higher and higher up into the mountain until they got to the coldest, top of most legs there. And when they got there, Psyche ran ahead, looking for her husband, looking for her husband. And as she ran ahead, she heard suddenly behind her all the music changed. It changed into a dutch, and women started screaming and wailing. And she turned around, and she could see them pulling their hairs and beat ash into their breasts. And all the golden banners were taken out and were replaced by black banners. And Psyche said to her parents, what's happening? Has my husband died? And her father looked and said, of course, your husband to me is dead himself. And we have to leave you this ledge to meet him. And with that, every single one of them turned round and they walked away from the mountain and they left the poor Psyche on the ledge by herself with a nice cold in his hand. And she was standing there and she was freezing and she was waiting for death. And she thought, it's getting colder and colder. I won't wait for death, I will embrace death myself. And she took a big, big run, and she ran to the edge of the ledge, and she leapt off. And the wind caught her. <coughs> and the wind caught her, and gently took her down, and wrapped her all the way down to the other side of the wind. And when she opened her eyes, she was in the most beautiful garden, with lovely flowers and trees, little bunny rabbits and tears and everything. And out in the distance, she could see a palace, golden and glittering in the sun. And she made her way to the palace, and she opened the door, and she stepped in, and the boy said, Welcome, mistress. She said, Who is that? Who are you talking to? I'm talking to you, mistress. Your husband owns this palace. You're his wife. You're the mistress. And the boy she stepped on. She said, Where are you? Where are you? You're invisible. But we will look after you, and we'll take care of you. And so they did. They took her, and they bathed her, and they changed their clothes, and they fed her, and they looked after her. And Saki was quite very happy with this. And night came on, night came on, and the voices took her to the bed chamber. She knew this point to make it a room. They took her to the bed chamber. <laughs> and they put her in there and said to her husband, enjoy me in a little while. But the room will remain dark. She lay there and will come to you. And so, poor me, Psyche, she lay in the bed and she didn't know what was going to happen. And she was laying there trembling and she was thinking, oh my god, what's going to happen? And the next thing she heard a sound. There was a creak, and then a shake came on the bed. And then she felt breathing inside her. And the poor Psyche was shaking, but now she was terrified. <laughs> and then a pair of hands went on her throat. And then the hands moved and they touched her breasts. And Psyche. <gasps> <laughs> and the hands went all the way down her belly and followed down and down, and her pair of lips kissed her lips and kissed her breasts and moved all the way down her body. Well, things get more and more torrent, and eventually the river was in the bed with her, lay upon Psyche. And suddenly, her body began to melt and sing and explode and sparks, and she thought she was about to burst, and she was flying off in space, all the different parts, and she roared out, ah, this is incredible! And the next time, ah, she was back in her body again, and she was lying there, absolutely shaking, going, ah. And her husband said, is that okay? <laughs> Psyche 
desire. She wanted to know what her husband looked like. Every night came to the doctor, she could feel his body, but she could never see him. And she said to him, husband, husband, I long to see you as much as I touch you. Please let me see you. Her husband said, Psyche, you can never see my face. For the minute you look on me, our marriage will be destroyed. You must accept this. And though her psyche, she did, she knew, okay, this is fine, this is the way it works. And she went all the living and living her life with her husband. And one day she woke up and was a bump in her belly. This is what happens. It was a bump. She realized she was pregnant. And she told her husband, and her husband said, this is wonderful, wonderful news. He said, but I have also had terrible news for you. Terrible, terrible news. There's danger on our marriage. You see, your two sisters have heard that you were left out of the mountain there and they think you're dead. And they went to the palace of your mother and family and they've been mourning there and now they're coming to the mountain to mourn. And if they should see you, well, they'll start asking you about me and they'll start teasing you and trying to all about me. And if you say one word, well, our marriage is over. It's psyche. She spoke to her husband and she said, my sisters, my sisters, please let me see them one last time. Please let me look on their faces. I haven't seen a face of anybody I've loved for months and months. Please let me see them. And her husband relented and said, so be it. I will send the wind up to the top of the mountain. The wind will ask your sisters to come down here. And you can show them around and talk to them. But you can say nothing about me. So the wind was set up to the top of the mountain. And sure, there was the two sisters, heartbroken, and shouting out, Psyche, Psyche. And the wind said, sisters. Calm down, Psyche's still alive. Step onto me and I'll take you to her. And the sister stepped on the wind, and the wind took all the way down the hill into the park. And then the park went to them. It was her sister, Psyche. <gasps> well, the two girls were so happy. They ran to them, embraced them. Both. This is wonderful. And you're pregnant. This is incredible. And she said, I'm pregnant, and I'm happy, and I'm very, very rich. And I have a wonderful husband. And I have a wonderful, wonderful palace. And she took them to the palace, and she was showing them all the silver rooms and the gold rooms. And the sisters, who had been mourning not an hour before, started to get a little bit jealous. A little bit more jealous. And he said to her, What is your husband like? Ah, oh, he's an old merchant. He's away with his fleet just now, taking goods over somewhere else. Oh. And he kept asking, Tell us about your husband, tell us about your husband. And she kept distracting. She said, Have a gift. And she'd give him a bit of jewelry of gold or a, a bit of jewelry of diamonds. And the more jewelry she gave, the more angry and angry the sisters got. And the more they picked up, Tell us about your husband. And poor Psyche got all confused. She was saying, Oh, he's a young fella. And every time she described her husband a different way. Until her two sisters realized she'd never seen her husband. Well, a few hours went by, and Psyche said to her two sisters, Let's have a picnic. Go outside to the gardens and I'll join in a little way. And the two sisters went out to the garden and they started to speak to each other. Ah, wasn't that typical? Psyche. She's been married off to a fella. She's never seen his face. But he's got a massive gold palace. He can command the wind. It's obvious. She's married up to a god. And here it is too. Married up to old men who can't get their peckers up. And she's got a divine baby in her belly. Oh, can you believe it? It's bloody typical. Do, do something. And so they whispered. And they came up with a nasty, nasty plan. Well, Psyche came back with the house. She all the stuff with the picnic. And the two sisters looked up. And they said, Psyche, I'm so happy for you. This is, this is. And Psyche said, what's wrong? She says, nothing wrong. It's just, we're so happy for you. There's nothing wrong at all. What's wrong, sisters? Nothing, nothing. It's just, it's just, we heard something. Why don't you hear? No, no, it doesn't apply to you. We just, we just heard this woman and she got married off to her husband that she never seen. Every night she went to bed and she never saw him. And it turned out that her husband was actually a giant monster. A huge serpent with giant teeth and poison cut in his mouth and he got her pregnant. And the reason he got her pregnant was he was eating women with babies in their bellies. And when she was eight months pregnant, he ate her up. But that's not what you have to you, Psyche. Because you know what your husband looks like and he told us all about him. And Psyche looked at her sisters, oh, I've never seen my husband. Oh my God. Oh dear God, sister. Oh no. You must be my own damn monster. I must be. What can I do? What can I do? Don't panic. Leave my plan. <laughs> Tonight when you go to bed, take a lantern and have a little flame in it and close the lantern over so it's damp. And take with you a huge butcher's axe. And when you're lying in bed and your husband lies beside you and he's sleeping, open the lantern. And take up the axe and whack his body to bits. And then come get us and we'll help you take all the gold and silver back to the mom's house. Sisters, you're wonderful. Thank you very, very much. Oh, thank you. I'll do that. 
So the night came on. The side was lying in bed, the creatures out, the little one, and her husband was going and they they both. And then the husband fell asleep. But to the <laughs> And she lay there and she took a hold of the axe. And she loved the lamp. And she stood up, she got the axe, and she took it over, and she looked. And she saw her husband. And it was Cupid himself. Lying there, handsome and beautiful, his beautiful gold chest going up and down, and his hair up full and rosy, and his wings stretching out and twitching over bit at the end, and he looked at him and she looked at him, sighed looked at him, and she never said so beautiful, and she kissed him, and she kissed his lips, and she kissed his body, and she knew she couldn't kiss him too much because he might wake up and he could walk up and saw the man was over, but she loved him so much, she kissed him, she had to touch every single part of him, she couldn't believe how beautiful he was, she walked his way down his whole body to his knees and his toes, and right to his feet she saw the bow and arrow. And she looked at the bow and arrow and she reached out and she touched the arrow. It pricked her finger. And the minute it pricked her finger, the love of it bigger and bigger and bigger until it came into a burning passion. And she threw herself at her husband. She jumped on top of him. Ah! And she grabbed him and she was chewing the face off him and the feet with her hands and full of passion pouring out him. And still, she was sleeping. But she was born. <laughs> and then she knocked over the lantern. And the lantern spilled oil on Cupid's arm. And he woke. Oh, I did. Wife, he said, wife, how dare you? And with that, he beat his wings and he jumped at the window and he started to fly away. Well, Psyche, she got the hole of his leg and he got out the window and she held on, she held on, but eventually she fell to the ground. And Cupid went up and he sat in a tree and he looked at And he said, Psyche, Psyche, how could you go against me so? My mother, Venus, sent me to earth to punish you. But when I saw how beautiful you were, I fell in love with you instantly. But I knew if you were sorry, my mother would find out and she would destroy us. And now you have broke our marriage. And I must go to heaven and take the wrath of my mother. And we can never see each other again. And with that, Cupid beat his words and he flew. And Psyche was heartbroken. She was mad to the most perfect man in the world. God, and he left her. Well, with that, being a young pregnant woman, she done all the things young pregnant women do, but she said she was sick. And she went to the open river and she threw herself into the river. But the river refused to be polluted with the death of Psyche. And he watched her all the way back to the kingdom of the Lord of the Father. And Psyche came ashore there, and by now her heartbreak had changed into something else. It changed from glittering and glittering love into lightning and weight of hate. Hatred for her sisters who had tricked her so. And she decided to get her revenge. And she went up to her mother and father's palace and she sneaked in and she went to the chamber where her two sisters were. And she went into the chamber and she was weeping now. Oh, she said, oh. And her sister said, Psyche, Psyche, what is wrong? Oh, sisters, sisters, I did exactly what you told me to do. But, but my husband, it turned out, was Cupid the God. Oh, she said, sisters, no way. It was Cupid the God. And he was so angry that I saw him. And he threw me aside. I said the marriage is over, and worse than that, I said he would marry my sisters instead. Did he? He did indeed, but I know you never betrayed me, sisters. I know you would never fulfill his commandments to walk up the mountain and go to the ledge and then step off onto the wind. You'd never do that. Of course you wouldn't. <laughs> and she went to bed with him, and the two sisters were fighting each other to see if they were And the other sister took the other and said, Hold on, keep us a god. He probably married both of us. And they both relaxed. And with that, they held hands, they held each other with their hair ready, the nicest clothes, and they walked skipping all the way out of the city, all the way up to the top of the mountain, and up to the mountain ledge. And then they looked at each other and said, Ah, here we go, divinity, here we come. And they held hands, and singing and skipping, they ran to the ledge's edge, and they left on. And of course, there was no one there, and they were still holding hands as they screamed and fell and fell, <laughs> and were torn to bits in the box below. <laughs> so if your wee sister ever gets pregnant by divinity, do not piss her off. <laughs> <laughs>